I'm Tom Frezza, Director of Education at the National Museum of the U.S. Navy, and today we're at the Eisenhower Farm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania for their World War I weekend. And with me today from the Living History crew of the cruiser USS Olympia are Luke Clausen and Todd Rambo. So, uh, uh, guys, what, what, what can you tell me about uh, what you're portraying today? So we are representing the U.S. Navy's landing force as they landed in Veracruz, Mexico in April 1914. Okay. So, uh, landing force. So, what, what specifically do, do the, uh, does the landing force do? So they act as infantry. And that's the idea, understanding that the Navy is often the first one somewhere. Since they have ships, they're going out places. You have to have a contingent on board that can go ashore and do riot control or serve as infantry or hold the line until the Army can arrive. Okay. Well, I, I, I know we'll probably get a lot of questions about this, but uh, let, let's try to answer it here. Uh, and the main question will be, why sailors don't, doesn't the Navy have Marines for, for that very purpose? So historically, the Marines were supposed to be a police force aboard ship to protect the officers from unions, or served uh, as part of a gun division or sharpshooters in the fighting tops. But that's something that ends up going away for the Marine Corps over time. But there were never large parties of them aboard, typically a squad level, never even company level, aboard capital ships. Okay. Oh, that, that's interesting. So uh, what, what can you tell me about the, uh, the uniform and the uh, equipment that he's carrying here? So for every ship, up to 25% of the ship's company are trained to fight as infantry, and they have to carry all the infantry gear with them. So a lot of it is just standard gear as the Army would have used during the period. So you've got an ammunition belt, which holds everything together, the first aid tin, which holds your bandage. You've got the canteen, which has also got a cup on the inside. Okay. He's got the full pack, which is a standard infantry gear. So in here is your bedroll. You've got a shelter tent, which is half of the tent. And you've got a tent pole and a guy rope, and you've got a blanket on the inside. Your meat can, which is your mess can, is on the outside. On the inside, you have rations. So you have hard bread. You've got a can that's got bacon in it. You've also got the forager, which is called your toothbrush. So that's sort of thing. The bayonet's hooked to the outside. Every sailor has to carry his own ammo, just as the Army did. So they all carry bandoliers full of ammunition for the standard rifle of the period, which is the U.S. 1903 Springfield. Fantastic. So, uh, uh, do we see a, a landing force today at all? You uh, do not. That's something that goes away for the Navy right around World War II. Okay. That increasingly the Marines take over you know, as, as the infantry. World War II is kind of their proving ground for fighting as a solid infantry force. Starts in World War I, goes through World War II. And also, it's just not the Navy's job after World War II, that they're expected more to do things like to be on their ships, you know, more submarine warfare as you get into the Cold War. You know, so their job is more to deal with the ships themselves and not necessarily worry about being an infantry force. 